In this video, we're going to learn how to display a simple sprite with pure ECS in Unity 2019. We're going to display it, then transform it, and finally create a custom mesh through code. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. So when I was doing my ECS research, it took me quite a while to understand how to draw a simple sprite. The documentation is still changing, so it required a lot of trial and error to identify the necessary components. So this is going to be a really simple video just to show you the basics you need in order to draw a simple sprite. First, if you know nothing about ECS, then start by watching my video on getting started. It clearly explains how ECS works, how to make entities, systems, and so on. So in here, let's just make a testing script to run our code. So just a simple new C Sharp script, call it testing. Let's make a game object to run our code. So testing and drag the script, just like that. Okay. Now first, we obviously need an entity. So let's make that. So just like this, we have a simple entity. We can run our code and on the entity debugger, yep, we got our entity. Okay. Now, in order to have a visual, we need to add some components. So the main one we need is type of render mesh, which is inside the using unity.rendering. This is the one that actually renders our mesh. And then we also need to add the type of local to world. This is inside using unity.transforms. This component essentially calculates the matrix for how the mesh should be displayed. And as of the current ECS implementation, it is required to add this component. If you just add the render mesh, it won't actually be visible. So on the render mesh here, you can see what we need. We need a mesh and a material. So let's do that. Let's add some serialized fields in here. Now let's go to the editor to select our mesh and material. So here for the mesh, we can use Unity's default quad mesh. And for the material, let's make one in here, a new material for our sprite material. Let's use unlit transparent and drag our zombie sprite. And we drag our material onto there. Okay. So in here we have our two things. Now let's set our entity component data. So we go into the entity manager to set the shared component data since the render mesh is of type shared component on this entity. We pass in a new render mesh. And here we pass in the mesh as our mesh and the material as our material. Now in order to display, we just need to make sure that the local to world calculates the correct values. So in theory, these are the only two that we need, but in order to calculate the local to world value, we can simply add the type of translation, which will automatically fill it up. So this one is not strictly essential if you set the local to world values yourself, but this way it's extremely simple. So let's see. And yep, there's our sprite being visible in a pure ECS way. Here in the entity debugger, you can see that our sprite has all of these components. The ones that we manually added were the render mesh and the local to world. And then you need the translation in order for these values to be calculated. And here on the render mesh system, you can see that it is running on one instance. Okay, so these are the complete basics to draw a very simple sprite. You just need the render mesh component and the local to world component. Now let's see the other related components. Now on a normal game object, you here have the transform with a certain position. And in pure ECS, we have the equivalent, which is the translation component. You can see here the definition, as you can see, it is simply component data and contains a float three for the value. And the float three, here is the definition, as you can see, just has an X, Y, and Z. So this is our position component. Let's make a simple system in order to move it. Just down here, make a public class for the move system, which implements a component system. Again, if you don't know how ECS works, check out the link in the description where I slowly go through what is a system and how they work. So in here, I'm just going to quickly implement the abstract class, which has the onUpdate method. And here, simply cycle through the entities for each entity that contains a translation component. On each entity that has a translation component, 
let's just move them up. So translation.value.y was equals by a certain amount multiplied by time dot delta time. Okay, so here we have a simple system that will act on the translation component and simply move them up. Let's test. And yep, there's our sprite constantly moving up. Okay, great. Now again, back in our game object, on the transform we also have a rotation, and the equivalent in ECS is also called just rotation. Here is the definition of the rotation component, and as you can see, we simply have a quaternion. So, let's make a rotator system. Also, this value is of type unity.mathematics and not the normal Unity engine. So we have to go here using unity.mathematics, which is a specific math library for our entity system. So here we have our rotator system, which is running on every entity that contains a rotation component. And we are simply rotating it over time. Let's see. And yep, there it is. There's our sprite moving up and also rotating. And here on the entity debugger, you can see the entity and inspect the entity bounds. As you can see, the local to world and the world render bounds, those are calculated automatically. And we have our rotation component rounding and the translation moving up. So with those two done, the last one on our normal game object transform, we have the scale. And in ECS, we have two ways of setting our scale. We have the type of scale. This one, as you can see, just takes a float for a value. So this is if you want just a single scale on all of our X, Y, and Z. So let's make a system for that. So again, we have this system running on every entity that contains a scale, and we are simply increasing it over time. So let's see if the sprite does indeed increase in size. And yep, there's our sprite scaling up, moving up, and also rotating. Now, as I said, we have two ways of rotating. We have this one, which is a uniform rotation. You just have one float value for the entire rotation. And then you have another one, which is type of non-uniform scale. And this one, as you can see, it takes a float three. So you can set a different scale for the X, the Y, or the Z. So here, instead of a system, let's just set it on our start. Let's make him stretched up, so 1F, 3F, and 1F. Okay, so let's see if we have a rectangle stretched vertically. And yep, there it is, the sprite is indeed stretched. So one of the main things between using the entity system or the default game object is that you no longer have the automatic scale as you do when using a sprite render. So here, for example, I have two sprites. This is a square sprite, and this is a rectangular sprite. And here, if I were to create a simple sprite render, I drag this one and I can see it perfectly matches and drag this one and it perfectly matches. However, when using ECS, we have to give our actual mesh size so it doesn't get automatically translated from the sprite and whatever you're using in here. So again, in a normal game object, you have your basic transform, which has a position, rotation, and scale. And in pure ECS, you have an object which has a translation for the position, rotation for the rotation, and either scale or non-uniform scale for the actual scale. Now let's spawn a bunch of entities instead of just one. Okay, so here we are spawning 10 entities. If this code seems weird, then make sure you check out the getting started video. So let's see our 10 entities. Okay, so here we have our 10 sprites. And now in here, if we go and see our stats, you can see that they are not currently being batched. In order to solve that, we need to enable GPU instancing. So we go into our material. And now in here, as of the current version, using the sprite shader, if I go in here, select sprites and default, if I click on Enable GPU Instancing, for some reason the sprites disappear. I'm not sure if this is a shader bug or what it is, but it doesn't work. So one shader that I found out that it does work with sprites is to go in here into Legacy Shaders, select our Transparent Diffuse Shader, and now we can enable GPU Instancing. 
Now in here, another problem we have is the sprites become dark and that's because of lighting. So we need to go here onto rendering, lighting settings and set the ambient lighting to white. And just like that, there are our sprites and as you can see, they are all being batched. Okay, so we have learned how to create and display a simple sprite using pure ECS. Now, one thing that is extremely useful to know is how to create the mesh through code. Since each sprite no longer gets automatically sized as you saw, we need to either use the scaling component or have a different mesh per sprite. So let's make a mesh completely through code instead of using our serialized field. So let's go here and make a function to create a mesh. So a private mesh create mesh. And in order to make a simple quad, it's actually quite simple. All we need are two polygons. So that means we have four points. So we define an array for our vertices and we create it with four points. Then we also need to apply UV to those same vertices. So we also have four. And finally, in order to make a polygon, we need three points. So for two polygons, we need six triangles. All right, now let's set these values up. So to keep things simple, let's define them in a clockwise fashion. So our first vertex will be on 0, 0, so on the lower left corner. The second one on 0, 1, so the upper left corner. Then on 1, 1, so the upper right corner. And then on 1, 0, so on the right bottom corner. Let's make those vertices. So we have one on minus 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 minus, then on minus plus, so up there, plus plus, so up there, and plus minus, so in there. Now for the UV, we're going to use the whole sprite, so it's very simple. Okay, the UV essentially matches how we defined our vertices. And finally for the triangles, this is where we need to be careful. Each triangle needs to be defined in clockwise, otherwise we're going to be looking at the back of our polygon. So here each triangle is an index of the vertex. So these are all the values we need in order to create a simple quad. And now we just create the actual mesh. And it's that simple. We create the mesh, assign the vertices, the UVs, and the triangles. And now we can go all the way up here. And instead of using our serialized film mesh, let's get rid of this one. And here we do a create mesh. And let's also stop moving it on the scale so we have our default mesh. Okay, let's see if our sprite is indeed being displayed in a square. And yep, there's our sprites and all of them being displayed using a nice simple mesh that we created through code. So now all we need is to be able to create a mesh of different size. So for example, we would create a square mesh for this texture. And for this one, we would create another one since as you can see, that is stretched. Let's see. Okay, so here the only thing we need is to go into our create mesh function and let's receive a float for the width and a float for the height. Then here, let's calculate a float for the half width, which is our width divided by 2f, a float for the half height which is our height divided by 2f. And here we just use this. So we're doing exactly the same logic, except we have a width and a height. So then let's go in here. And for these ones, let's use the same 1f, 1f. So we still have a square, let's see. And yep, we are still displaying squares, okay. Now let's go here, add another material. So first one, rename this one for the zombie material. And this one will be the kunai material. Now here, let's create 20. And then we do a cycle. And we're going to put essentially the first 10 using the zombie material and the next 10 using the kunai material. So in here, we just do if the eye is under 10, then we use the zombie material. If not, we use the kunai material. Okay, that's it for the material. Now we can go here and create our two different meshes. So on the first 10, we're going to use the zombie mesh and zombie material, and on the next 10, use the kunai mesh and the kunai material. 
So we are no longer using non-uniform form scale, but rather we are creating two different meshes for our two different sprites. Let's see. And yep, here we have both meshes and they are all correctly scaled. This sprite is using a square mesh and this one a rectangular mesh. So you can see how creating a mesh through code is extremely useful when dealing with the entity component system. So that's pretty much it for spawning and displaying a simple sprite using pure ECS. The main thing is really just the render mesh and the local to world components. Then you have these components which are the equivalent for our game object transforms. And you can dynamically create meshes in order to display any size we want. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Alright, see you next time.